Okay, my friends, Roger once again, Mount Fossil University, with another unbelievable thing from antiquity. Now, what is this? This is a copper coin, and it, it was in a child's hand when they were buried. And you can see the hand down to here has been basically preserved as mud fossil, more or less. And then it turned into bonish material. Now, you always hear me talking about transition metals, transition metals. Tra well, the most important of the transition metals is copper. That's copper. Now, you see that little hole right there? You see that little hole right there? You see the copper around the copper? Well, what is it doing? It's trying to get into the transition metals. Transition metals are highly conductive. Now, I did this experiment a while back um, with chicken bones and and copper and a little bit of electricity. I put a little electrode into here and fed some electricity. We're going to look at this in a microscope. And you can see what it does to the... Well, you, you see how it invades the, the bone. And then I have other ones here that are in... Uh, we're going to look at all this stuff in a minute. And I have a... Well, here. Just to show you, give you a little advanced warning of what you're going to be seeing. We're going to be looking at some fingertips and some uh, like that's a fingertip you see this and I always talk about the blood being a preserver that's the blood that's blood that's a fingertip and I, I'll show you and I can show you the grip skin I show you the finger the tip I show you the blood I show you all the crystallization that's inside here this is I, I've studied this quite well the, the vein and the artery are in the back there you see the, uh, I believe that's the artery on the left and the vein on the right once or the other. You see that little bump? I believe that's the uh, vein side because it, uh, the bump is like a valve. I can't remember. I gotta look at it in a microscope. But you see that one on the other side? Yeah, the other side is the artery. Uh, yeah, artery. The vein is on the left, the artery is on the right. The artery is that little clear one. I will see that dot there. See that little dot right there? That's where the uh, artery is, and arteries don't have clamps. You see that bump right there on the left? Right over there? That bump is a vein, a valve, and that won't uh, let the blood go backwards in your body. And that's why this side here, there's your ar arterial blood. See, your arterial blood is here. Like I said, that's the artery. The vein blood is on the other side. Veins don't blow out. See, the vein doesn't blow out. The artery does. And the artery is the red blood. I mean, there's so much chemistry here to look at, to understand, and why did it petrify in this manner? See all those fibers? That's grip skin. I'm, really, I'm deep into this. I understand this stuff very, very well now, my friends. Not to brag. Like my old boss said, it ain't bragging if it's true. Okay, when I said I made some mud fossils, which I did, and I, uh, I made them in salty, muddy solution with a pH about 7.4, 7.5, somewhere in that area, somewhere similar to body chemistry. And then I put a little bit of electric current, which is, which is normal. This is, look at, a telluric current or earth current, electric current, moves underground or through the seas. Well, these things were in the sea, and they were attached to the ground. So they are going to be flowing the electricity down through their bodies into the ground. And this I also made up here was, was, was with chicken tissue. And this was just, um, you know, it's exactly what you're going to see in, in stone. And I, that only took like six months. That's right here in the microscope, see? And, uh, you know, and, and then you, I have all the fibers and all that. And I, these are the things I show. And I say, oh, look at all this. Look at us. You see these transition zones where they go into much more mineral from the fibers? You can learn a hell of a lot just by looking at things. And people refuse to look. Don't care. Quite distressing. Uh, we're going to get it. Like I said, I got a whole batch of them. Let's get started. 
Okay, I told you I made some mud fossils uh, with using copper and in some salt water, and I also put in blood meal. The blood meal gives it the transition metals, and then I just left it there, I don't know, a couple of months, whatever. And, and very low current flowing through there, just about what it is in the ocean, not much more than that. And this is what the product is. Now, if you don't understand what you see in front of you right now, I am going to be a little disappointed if you are a student of Mud Fossil University, because this is what? And that is what? Come on. Come on. Arterial blood, vein blood. The green is the copper, and I, I think I understand where the copper will accumulate in your body. Why would you have copper in your body? What, what does it do? Well, I think we've already talked about it. It's an excessive source of electrons gigantic amounts of electrons around this copper. Well, what, use, what are you going to use the electrons for? I believe that they are the source of collection of, of copper in your body, and I'm just guessing, this is just a wild ass guess. I, 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 your liver in that area lets a lot of the blood through, well, lets all your blood through. And that's what cleans it. That's the, the hepatic, uh, I forget what they're called. Uh, anyway, it's through your liver. And your liver literally washes stuff out of your blood. And this is like some kind of detergent. <laughs> I mean, it's copper. It's co it's got a ton of extra electrons. That's basically <laughs> what a detergent does, right? I mean, it's got to do something in there. It's got to it's got to disrupt and break up the other molecules. That's what electrons do. You force them in there. <laughs> Something's going to spit out. Now, normally you have to heat something up to get a whole batch of extra electrons in, but when you're using copper. They come with them. Okay, Roger, once again, Mud Fossil University bundling together another presentation. Transition metals, talking about them all the time. What do they do? What good are transition metals? They are what is in your blood. I'm going to show you. I can prove this. These transition metals, you see all this plus and this and that and so forth, plus and this and all these different colors. Well, what does that mean? That means that these metal complexes can pinch other molecules and bring them down and drop them off where they have to go. Carbon dioxide, um, all your different vitamins and minerals and all those different complexes your body needs to work with. These are saturated in your blood, in the bloody matrix. Iron, magnesium, all of these different things, all of these different metals. And if you don't have them, you're going to be sick. Now, when you die, they no longer move through and give and take their electrons to exchange particles. They become stable. And here's what they look like when they become stable. You see that? I just showed you all those different colors. Well, what do you see here? That is obviously a specific type of tissue, and what it is is it's the ventricle walls, and these are the heart strings, I believe. Now, this is extremely elegant and loaded with fibrous material, and that's where it collects these different transition metals. But this only can collect them in certain areas where all of the other aqueous migratory molecules are already gone. And then, because I have a heart here. Hold on, somewhere around here. Oh, I can never find things when I need it. Hold on a second. All right, at one time this was a heart. And it had all these different little pockets and this and that in there and chambers and all that stuff. Now, this is now 100% silicates.
I believe. Quartz is SiO2. Now, normally, silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide would normally have a bunch of different minerals within it, and it would be like sandy, this and that. You wouldn't really see a whole lot. But where you could get everything else out except the transition metals, and the transition metals bind to these fibers in here, which is obviously you can see that. Now, in the, in the heart, uh, well, and, and this would have been a spectacular, a spectacular opal because it is completely, completely evacuated of everything but its tissue and some of this silicate. Now, if it had stayed in its full form, I don't know how big this would be, but this has been crunched down and all the, you know, a lot of the, there's still some pockets in here. But it's certainly nothing like it would have been had it stayed in its original form, like this one is. Now, what? A, why do we see this red here and a whole batch of colors here instead of the red ball in the center? The reason is this was laying that way. And all of the metals drained down to the bottom, which is this was laying flat. So that was the up, and these are less the the liquidy stuff is less dense and doesn't sink like the metals do so that would have been down and this would have been up but that's what this baby would have been unbelievable you know sometimes like I have another heart around here somewhere hold on here it is. and this one um, or this could be a liver I don't know I really, as at this point, you know, sometimes you really got to look at things carefully. I didn't really look at this too close. I just expect, I'm pretty sure it's a heart. It must be. You know, you see some of these things. I'd like to see some of the architecture of it a little better. But almost anything can be figured out what it is. You know, there is, it's, there is a certain geometry in there to the to the tissue and of course there's the chemistry and all that all right I was gonna bundle the whole thing in but I decided to break it up I'm gonna do the next one on opal toes that's an opal toe and this is literally the fabric of life wrapped around I will show you I have other ones here that display the same characteristics